Hello guys! Welcome back to another video, and today I have some very exciting news to share with you guys. Uh, today I'm announcing the return of the King's Cup Invitational. We are doing King's Cup 2, Electric Boogaloo. So, there's going to be five decks per player, four players, three weeks, two finalists, and of course, one prize. So, this is the, the very brief overview, and the point of this video is to essentially go over uh, some of the key rules and how this is going to work, just so you guys have all of the information as we're moving, uh, as we're headed into the tournament season, and of course feel free to share this um, with anybody else who you know who's interested in cards, who might not necessarily be seeing it here, it will also be posted in the cards discord as well as my own discord, where you'll be able to see all future updates concerning this tournament. So, the King's Cup, what is it? And how is it going to work? Well, essentially, it's a tournament um, that I'm hosting, and I've devised a series of somewhat complex rules for uh, the, these four players to go through to create the most competitive, but simultaneously the most interesting tournament that uh, I can devise. And how this is going to work is, instead of just having a simple single elimination bracket, um, there is going to be a round robin. It is four players in a group. They will each play each other once over the course of three weeks. So that's going to be one match per week per player, or two matches a week uh, that I will be streaming and casting, and you will be able to watch. And in each of these games, so each of these matches, both players will bring five decks. They will allow... They will receive one ban, meaning that these are going to be best of seven sets, uh, except for the finals, where it, there is no ban, still five decks, so it's a best of nine. And uh, we're going to get a bit into how these decks are being filled, but this is not your standard cards tournament. I do not want simply who is able to pilot the five best decks in the game, or the, the best deck for the five nations in the game. I want there to be an equal component of deck building as there is piloting, and because of that, there's going to be several... Uh, deck restrictions that are going to both be present throughout the whole tournament and some that are going to change on a weekly basis that it will also create a very new and interesting um, sort of tournament and decks to look at every single week for you, the audience. So the general rule that will go over the entire tournament, including the finals, is that each deck must contain entirely unique cards. And what this means is you cannot have any cards in any deck if that same card shows up in any of your other four decks, and that regardless of rarity. So, of course, it, we're used to a somewhat of a version of that. If you're limited by nation, you can only, of course, you can only run the elites of that nation in one of your decks, because you can only run one deck of that main nation, but this is being applied to all cards. So, if, even if you're running one copy of a Dragon Slayer in one deck, you may not run any more copies of Dragon Slayer in any other of your decks. However, you are allowed to run multiple decks of the same main nation if you want. There is no restrictions on what your main nation or ally nation are, just that you cannot run cards that are the same across multiple decks. So this is going to allow a quite uh, a, a different and new and very complicated um, way to develop these tournament lineups, and we'll hopefully see some new decks, some new lineups, uh, some very interesting matches, and some very interesting matchups. And... On top of this, there will be an additional format each week just to ensure that we don't see people just simply copying each other's decks or card countering a lineup that they think the other person's going to bring. We're going to see completely new formats each week, and it will be a new puzzle for these four players to solve. Now, the game schedules and deck lists will be announced weekly. There's not going to be a fixed date since, of course, when you have a league format, it can be somewhat difficult to ensure that two players have a agreed-upon time that works for them. So when these times are agreed upon, uh, I will announce it at the start of the week, and on those dates at those times, there will be a stream. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Join my Discord for updates if you haven't already. And, of course, every match will be streamed on my Twitch, which there is a link in the description here. Um, and if you can't catch it live, then, of course, you can um, watch the VOD either on Twitch or I will be uploading these all to YouTube. And all of these tournaments will be casted by myself. And there might be a series of uh, different special guests joining me um, for the different casts over the course of this tournament, because there will be seven different streams, seven different casts, um, and maybe seven different guests. We will see. And, of course, the winner of the entire event will gain a $50 cash prize supplied by myself, just to give these players an, even an extra incentive um, beyond just 
regular competition to really try their hardest both in the deck building and the piloting and to ensure that we the audience get the best possible show uh, that these players can deliver. So what are the additional formats? Well as I mentioned unique cards uh, each deck must contain unique cards and this is going to create an interesting um, sort of thought process in itself because maybe you want to bring multiple say Britain decks and in bringing multiple Britain decks Maybe you're going to bring Brit Air and uh, a Brit Poland Control, and these are going to have two completely different card sets for the most part, but there's a couple key cards that might overlap, and you have to decide which deck they will go into, such as cards like Pioneer Regiment or Sexton uh, or Wellington. And then, on top of that, reserved cards will be able to be played in the first three weeks, so this is... A to ensure that um, there will be as wide a card pool as possible for the players to choose between, so that we're going to get um, a, a wider variety of different types of decks and different lineups that people can build with this uh, existing deck restriction. Now, each week is going to have an additional theme, so week one will just be classic. This is just going to be essentially regular cards. You can build any deck with the above restrictions um, in mind, but this is going to include all cards in reserved as well. So, you know, you, we will see Monty. Almost certainly every player will have Monty. I would be surprised if there wasn't. And you will see all of the big hitters coming back to the game. But again, you can't run them in every deck. Um, so there will be some very interesting decks to see for sure and some very interesting lineups. Then in week two, there will be a Pauper tournament. And again, this is going to be Pauper, but with all the classic cards. But unlike what sort of plagues the normal Pauper tournament format, is you will be restricted on what cards you can put in your deck. You cannot simply run four California Regiments in every single deck or three Monsoon Rots in every single deck. You will be limited on how many decks these cards can go into and how often they can appear. And there will be a ban, so if you can only put it in one deck, that deck might simply be banned. Now, week three is where we get into the most interesting, I think, the one that I'm personally most excited for. We get into the even or the odd, where all five of your decks must either contain all even cards or all odd cards on a deck-by-deck -deck basis. So you can have three even decks and two odd decks, uh, or any combination of the of the, the sort. With the idea is this is going to really make players think about what cards they are valuing, as well as um, how they build different nations. And this is going to make the uh, previous restriction of unique cards maybe slightly less restrictive, because if you're using Germany in an odd deck, then all of the even-cost German cards are still available if you then want to use Germany in an even deck, or a, vice versa, any combination of the nations. And then after these three weeks, when we have the scores all tallied up, there will be a finals, and the finals will just be a best-of-nine standard cards we put the reserved cards away. This is going to be standard cards. These are the decks that you're used to seeing in tournaments on ladder. Except it will still follow the same restriction that you have to have unique cards. So we will see maybe five decks we're largely familiar with, but maybe not. And certainly we're going to see some new tournament lineups as people are forced outside of their comfort zone. And this is really a test of their metal. This is a test of their cards skill. This is a test even of just their sheer resilience to play a lot of cards. Normally you don't play this much cards in one sitting. A best of seven, a best of nine is a lot to sit through as a player trying to think your hardest playing against some of the best competition there is in this game. Now let's get to the scoring really quick. So the way the scoring is going to work is rather than just simply who whoever wins the most sets, um, because in a round robin three players win or lose, that's likely going to lead to a lot of ties. Um, so, and also it could lead to people devaluing certain matches or giving up early if it seems like all hope is lost. So instead, we're going to be scoring this based on game difference. So you gain a point for every game you win, and you lose a point for every game you lose, and then you also gain a point for winning a match. So this means that if you win a hard-fought match 4-3, to three, because the regular matches are best of sevens, you will be getting plus two points, whereas if you absolutely dominate a match and win it for nothing, you will be getting plus five points, whereas if you get dominated, you will be getting minus four points, and that might be a bit hard to come back from. But even if you lose, if you manage to put up a fight, even if you maybe brought one bad deck or your opponent just had a slightly better thought-out lineup, you can still gain a bunch of points off of them by winning games with your better-built decks. So if even if you lose 4-3, you'll still even 
only lose a single point if it's that close fought. So that means that you could even theoretically still qualify for the top two position, even if you only win a single game, if your other two games are very hard fought. So every single game is going to matter a lot to these players, and that's going to keep the excitement level high for every single one of these games across the three weeks. Now, at the end of the three weeks, the top two players will advance to the finals, where they will play the best of nine standard set, where the winner receives the $50 cash prize pool. And in case of any tiebreakers, it will go to head-to-head, -head, so essentially which players won against each other. And if any player goes 3-0 in the regular um, round-robin portion of the tournament, so if any player wins every single one of their, well, if they win five games against all three players, that player is going to receive an advantage in the finals, which they will automatically qualify for, and they will receive a one-game advantage. So what that means is when they bring their five decks and the opponent brings their five decks, they look at it before the tournament starts, um, the player who went 3-0 will be allowed to pick one of their five decks to receive a free win on immediately, so they don't have to worry about getting that deck through, and they will start the series up 1-0. But again, it's a best of nine, so even if you're up 1-0, that's not guaranteed, but it is a little something for absolutely dominating uh, the group stage portion of this tournament. And of course, these, there's a lot of numbers here. These leaderboards will be updated and shared around after every single match, so you can very easily keep track of who is ranked where, and you can cheer on your favorite players as they uh, go up and down the leaderboards. Now, if we come back to the overview, it says here that there are four players, and I've talked a lot about these four players. They're all tournament players. They're all very, very skilled, and they're going to put on an amazing show. But who are these four players? For that, you will have to stay tuned, as that will be announced in the coming days. But in the meantime, what do you think of these formats? What do you think of the tournament as a whole? Maybe share your own potential tournament lineups that you think players might want. Share this around. Share the tournament. Because after all, this is for the community. This is to put on the most competitive and exciting cards show possible. So with that, that is it for me for this one. Again, stay tuned to my YouTube, my Twitch, and my Discord for more updates concerning this tournament. And I will catch all of y'all in the next one. What a performance there by J King. J King, full plot armor. J King is pushing himself into the ranks of the legend. J King is our world champion. J King 7. What? The back to back cards world champion.